wow, lovely, welcome. All right, so uh, do, you want, do you want some more music tomorrow, uh, tomorrow this morning? All right, so let me try to engage a little bit. If you can repeat after me, so uh, right foot, left, clap. All right, perfect, once again. You know the song? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> we 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 will rock you. All right, so we all can play mu music, right? So, I mean, this topic should be much easier now, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, today we can really uh, we Web designers know how to set legible body copy and ha how to set the layout. We have the responsive web design and responsive layouts, and we have multi-column, single-column layouts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I sometimes wonder if the you know, strive to to build usable web interfaces, accessible interfaces, removed us away from you know art direction, and creative thinking in um, on the web. And I, when I'm thinking about art direction, I don't think about uh, something like this. Um, I mean, I can understand comic science because this is a field trip bus, right? I can understand like six typefaces because it will be like very interesting trip, right? <laughs> Many places to visit. I can understand the italics here because it has to be dynamic, it has to move, right? And even the jumping dot, probably something you know you will play with, if, especially when you go to your trip with your kids. But what I really cannot understand is this here, right? <laughs> because to me, it seems like the designer hated this design so much that they put some kind of subliminal message here, like think twice, be called dial this number, you know, <laughs> like make a pause, you know, make sure you really want this. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about our direction in web design, I think about something like this. So this is the, the, the New York Times issue about really tall skyscrapers. So when you load the page, it should just animate the uh, the, the headline and also all the subheads uh, down below are also animated, kind of you know simulating this growth of of Manhattan you know up in the air. Um, and I don't know if you ever kind of uh, uh, stumble uh, across the the term typographics. Typographics are these typographic arrangements that you know create some kind of illustration. Uh, this is uh, this is the work of Herb Lubalin, famous American uh, typographer and graphic designer. And you've probably seen this um, this logo for for mother and child, and also this spasm uh, advert. Um, but I don't think this should be reserved only for for print, right? Um, for instance, the Bento Modern project, the thing that we designed uh, last year, uh, is a web font brochure website and. Um, it's a nice example how you can be really creative with typography on the web. Um, so, before that, let me just quickly explain what's responsive web design so that you have some kind of framework. And maybe some of you already use some of these techniques, but uh, it's not a bad thing to just repeat them quickly. So, number one, use different font sizes for different reading distances. If something is uh, closer to your face, you can you know have it smaller. If it's further away, you can have it. You you have to have it larger. Uh, currently, we, it's not ideal because we detect it by uh, test and media queries and hence, you know, kind of assume what's the device size and then we assume that it's handheld instead of um, something, you know, further away. But for instance, you can imagine that some, someday you'll have a really small screen or a refrigerator or you'll have, you want to read the recipe from your iPad that's on the um, kitchen um, desk, right? Um, so we cannot really assume the reading distance ba uh, based on the on the uh, media queries, right? Um, but anyway, uh, before we will have these um, you know reading distance uh, techniques uh, possible in browser. I mean, it's already possible, but you have to enable camera, and we have a lot of privacy issues. Uh, we can use a tool, sizecalc.com, to kind of enter the values for the assumed uh, reading distance, and then you get the, the value in pixels or whatever you want to use on the website. Uh, number two, 
maintain perfect proportions in a paragraph. We all know that uh, the longer the line, the more line spacing you require, you know, in between lines, so that the eye can find uh, the next row, right? When you when you end up uh, uh, and reading the, this line, you know, you need some kind of tunnel to, to bring the eye at the beginning of the next row. But the opposite applies too. So when you have really small uh, um, width of the screen, you have to uh, kind of compress the text so you don't end up having um, an itemized list instead of a paragraph. Uh, really cool tool to, to help you with that, universaltypography.com slash demo. Uh, the cool thing about it is when you move the sliders, it will you know, turn green or red whenever you hit the, you know, the edge of what's acceptable or what really doesn't work. Uh, number three, establish hierarchy appropriate for the screen real estate. That means that um, basically instead of using uh, different font sizes on smaller screens, because you'll have really huge headlines, you can use uh, all caps, for instance, for H2, small, ca uh, small caps for H3, or, or italics for H4, all at the same you know, font size of 16 pixels, or whatever is the body copy size. So you don't, you don't um, what's up with this? Uh, you don't um, waste your screen real estate. Oh, something's wrong with the graphic card. Not a good sign. All right, let's, let's try it so far, so good. Um, anyway, there's another tool, uh, modulescale.com. Uh, you can enter values here, and you, know, you, can, you can decide on a scale. These are basically musical scales, so you see music development design. Um, and then you can choose the, the values here and use them in, in your design. Um, I wrote an art article about uh, you know, different ways to set subheads, and there's about 20 different um, versions you can use um, you know, to style subheads. So you don't have to just rely on like font sizing and the usual suspects. Another thing is to indent paragraphs instead of separating them on mobile. So you have another line on the screen and you know, separate the paragraphs on, on the desktop. And then when you combine it with the previous rule, for small screens, you can use style variations such as all caps, small caps, italics for, for subheads. You can, you, you can indent paragraphs, and you can use white space to separate different sections, while on the desktop screens, you can use different font sizes. You can separate paragraphs by you know, entering um, a, an empty line in between. This is called block paragraphs. Uh, and you can use graphic elements such as uh, different background colors, borders, or textures to separate, for instance, the main content from the sidebar or header or whatever. Um, Still not supported by, by many browsers, but CSS shapes are something that they're really looking forward to, especially you know, when you'll have plenty of space on the desktop screen. It doesn't, you know, doesn't make sense to just fill it up with text. You can use CSS shapes. Sar Sudan yeah, um, is a, um, I'm mixing creation in English now, is a really great developer who, who, who's very, very well known uh, with, uh, for, for her SVG work, but she also uh, has a couple of um, CSS shapes demos that you can you know look up after. Um, the next thing is you can use graded fonts to kind of uh, normalize rendering across um, different pixel densities. What does it mean? For instance, for the low DPS screen, you can use uh, a grade like this, and for for high DPS screens, you can use a grade like this, because high DPS screens has have a lot more. Um, pixels on their disposal so they can render all the details in a font, right? So for instance, if you, uh, if you just apply the, the lower grade uh, to, um, to, for instance, default desktop resolution, and then provide uh, a heavier grade for, for, for instance, for a retina screen or something like that, it will be much more equal in appearance and rendering. And the difference between, opti uh, be between uh, um, font grades and font weights is that the font grade uh, doesn't change the offset of the words. So the word is the same width as the word in any other grade. While when you have regular and bold, bold is usually wide, wider, much wider. So basically with the grades, you have the same offset of the word, but it's a little uh, more legible on, on, uh, on a different resolution. Also, uh, this is a pixel with sub 
bit subpixels, uh, red, green, and blue. Uh, and when you change the orientation of the screen, it will also change how the rendering engine uh, smooths the, um, the curves. So again, you can use grades to compensate for that. Then we have uh, diff different uh, optical sizes. What, I, what do I mean by that? For instance, this is an optical size for small, uh, for small sizes. This one is for really huge. Uh, the main difference is that here you have a really uh, high contrast between um, tins and ticks. And here it's much more robust and more even, right? Again, here you have a really tall X height, while here the X height is, is, much, is much lower. What's the problem of using this optical size at, for instance, 12 pixels is that you will lose all these details because the browser won't be able to render you know, all the shapes that you have in a layer. And lastly, you can use different font widths for different uh, uh, screen sizes. So for instance, look at this guy here. So from condensed to middle to the regular, you know, we just swap. When it hits the breakpoint, we swap it to another font, and it will kind of occupy less space on, on smaller screens. Again, you don't have to do it manually. There's scriptfontwe.com. You, you enter a list of fonts that you want to use, and it will just detect which font is the best for the, for the given width. Here's a pro tip. You, you've probably never heard of Georgia Pro or Verdana Pro, but they actually exist. So if you want to uh, use Georgia and Verdana as a web save def uh, defaults and provide a better experience for mobile screens, you can you know, load Georgia Pro or Verdana Pro that are much more condensed. And you, know, you can fit more characters in a line on mobile screen. All right, so that's the first part. Uh, I always like to kind of you know, take a break after this list of rules. All right, so the main project, uh, this, is the, the, this is the link if you want to look it up, um, was done in collaboration with Indra Kupferschmidt. Here's her um, CTS, do you know what's that? That's chief type savant, so somebody who really knows typography. And Nick Sherman was quality assurance director. Uh, and when we started, the project, we, want, we didn't want to just you know, uh, have the, the traditional or, or conservative uh, product page with just the pictures and some text you know, describing how the product is really great. We, we wanted to, to you know, showcase what's really possible with that font live on the page. So we ended up basically doing two teams. And for um, both are fully responsive and use, utilizing the same HTML. Basically, uh, you know, um, emphasizing this this um, idea of having one HTML that you can style in different ways. So, in these two teams, only the CSS is different. The HTML is completely the same. All right. So we started with something like that. The initial idea was to um, to develop the newspaper layout and you know, kind of design from that. Um, other than that, we didn't have any any other limitations. The, the brief was to literally use as many responsive techniques as possible and you know, go crazy, try to kind of push, push the boundaries. Uh, but nevertheless, we started with just a paragraph. And we wanted to have this multi-column layout, which you know, resembles the, uh, the newspaper's layout. Um, but there was one problem. And that's when you, when you have smaller screens, you don't want to have uh, columns bleeding out of the screen, right? Because you'd have to you know, read one column and you'd have to scroll to another, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, apart from having the, uh, the width queries, right, where we kind of break the paragraph into two columns and then three columns, we also introduced a mean height media query so that you only get the columns if you can see the full section on your screen. So it never bleeds out of the screen. You don't have to scroll it to read it. Um, the formal version was the first to be developed, and we just literally uh, justified uh, this huge headline, uh, used some intro, and then we're thinking about how can we use the glyphs from the font file to actually add graphical elements. So everything that you see on this website is either a glyph or a CSS border. So we don't use any graphics or SVGs or anything like that. So, so everything is done with, with typography. Um, 
And then, you know, when we, when we established subheads, uh, that was all cool, that was all like proportional and following the rules that, that I mentioned previously, but something was missing. And so we introduced this, um, this dotted, you don't see it maybe on the screen, but it's, it's dotted uh, border. And it really uh, added this sophisticated, um, you know, detail to kind of emphasize the, um, you know, the fidelity of, of, of the typeface. And then uh, we also wanted to showcase some of the glyphs that are rarely used in web design. So for instance, this is a standard section sign. You have it in, in books, in contracts, in, in lexicons, in, you know, uh, it's, it's an actually valid sign, you can use it. Uh, we used it for, for about, then we used the mid dot for, for optical sizes, then the italic eye for how to use, plus for bonus features, and also the asterisk for pairings, because you can pair Benton with, with other fonts. All right, so whenever you need to showcase important details within content, in this case, open type features, we thought we should you know, do it in, in, a, in an interactive way. So basically, when you mouse over this whole section, these guys will switch their um, you know, from, from ligatures into non-connected uh, um, glyphs, right? And then you can you know, easily preview what's the difference between ligatures and non-ligatures uh, on the screen. If you're wondering how to enable open type features, there, uh, there's actually a property for that in CSS. So basically, this one means load the alternate characters from the font. This one means um, enable ligatures. And this one means um, enable small caps. Uh, if you never heard about it, I, I strongly suggest to visit the uh, clagnat.com sandbox slash CSS free. There's a lot of things you can actually try. It's, it's a you know check. Uh, it's a form with, with check boxes, and you can you know enable stuff and see how it works with your uh, with your text. There's one piece of bad news, of course. Do you know who doesn't support that? Who? It's not in the Explorer. It's Safari on mobile and, and desktop, right? <coughs> All right, so Safari supports open type features, but it won't allow you to you know, enable them at all. So you cannot, you know, uh, you cannot turn them off. So if, if, uh, if Safari renders ligatures, you cannot turn them off. For instance, if you want to current text, if you want to divide the letters, the ligature will just you know, keep its, its structure intact. So you'll have, for instance, if you have fi, it won't be current. So everything else could be kind of current and tracked, but this one won't. So in that case, you don't want to have ligatures. And unfortunately, you cannot do that in, in, um, in Safari. You cannot kind of disable it for, for these specific cases. But lucky for us, we have this add supports query. You know about that? So with add supports, you can test if the browser supports uh, any of these. And then if it does, then you can you know, enable them. Uh, also, really good resource, stateofwebtype.com by my friend Bram Stein. He works at Typekit. Uh, he collects all the all these inconsistencies, and you can you know look them up if you're not sure if it's support. All right, so the formal version was really great, and I was on my vacation. And you know what what else do you do on your vacation? You just you know lay around and think about. Uh, wait a minute, this is wrong. All right, that was my wife. All right, so uh, so I was thinking about you know my project, and I was I was reading a magazine, her magazine, of course. So I was like, well, let me recreate you know, this beautiful girl on the magazine cover. But instead of using a girl, I'll just use something that's really beautiful from the font. And in, in this particular typeface, the R is really, really something that's, re that's very distinctive from, uh, from other typefaces. So basically, you know, added the flower here like, you know, uh, to add additional uh, uh, kind of detail. And these two elements are actually pseudo elements. These are not in HTML. So again, it's very semantic you know, up to this point. Uh, we add them through CSS and then style them with CSS uh, to kind of keep the, 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 the basic HTML intact. All right, so there's a couple of things I want to, uh, I want to sh show you. Uh, so how to achieve 3D effects, drop caps, flip type, and rotated type. Very important thing about this is Whenever you try something like like 
any experiment, always keep in mind that it has to be responsive. It has to work on mobile, you know, tablet, desktop, whatever, refrigerator, or, or your car. So, so how to achieve a 3D effect? So we have one shade here, another shade here. Well, if you know how to, it's very easy, of course. Uh, we have text shadow property. There's a great net lesson about uh, text shadows. By the way, there's, there are uh, painter's shadows, which are you know, uh, l lower left, because this is when you paint the, the letters on, on the signage, for instance, you spend less color. And then we have printer's shadows, which are the ones that we usually uh, kind of mimic on the web, which are you know, to the right and to the left, which actually use a lot more colors. That's why painters don't use them. Trivia, whatever. Um, but the good thing about, again, CSS and SAS, and the good thing about you know, designers who can code is that you know, I'm super lazy. I don't want to tweak you know, like 20 values when I want to change the shade. So you can easily you know, write a SAS function with some arguments, arguments here, and then uh, you, know, you can just call it and you know, change the shade if you want to something else or you know, the depth of the, of the shadow. Uh, so this is really something that I love about uh, you know, coding in general. I can hack my own process. Um, another cool thing is this drop cap. Uh, that, that was kind of something we thought it will, just, it will be just floated to the left and it will work, but it's not like that, of course, because you know who and now. It's not Safari anymore, it's, it's Internet Explorer. Um, we'll just render it differently, it will just fall you know, into some weird baseline that doesn't exist on the whole web page, and then you know, you start questioning the existence of the universe, and is it really that when we look at it, it you know, runs faster, you know, far further away from from you know galaxies from each other, crazy stuff. And then you're like googling, and you stuck overflowing, if that's a word at all. Um, and then you find that you know some some guys have some problem. <laughs> So the Adobe web team developed this uh, dropcap.js. It's completely independent of any jQuery, so it's, you know, it's just that script. It's really small. And you can easily just um, you know, use the assign the values to, um, to kind of say, oh, right, I want three lines height, uh, high, or I want five lines high, but you know, uh, keep it in, you know, stick it out and keep it just uh, three lines indent into the text. So it's very, really, really cool thing. Uh, maybe most applicable for, 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 for writers who want to kind of have this uh, handcrafted feeling when they're writing their blog posts, for instance, in WordPress, not in Drupal, because this is not a conference, or Medium, uh, because they are not a threat to us. Uh, so, Another cool thing with, with this was, I mean, this was really straightforward. When you have something that you really like, that's, that's a bonus, then you can, uh, then, you know, you can, you have this emotion that you can evoke. Again, very cool rule, uh, just rotate the letter. If it doesn't work, nothing will happen. Uh, this flip type, also very easy. You use a transform scale rule, just flip it, it doesn't work, it will just render normally. Um, and then we have a couple of, uh, details here, they're hurting me up, so I'll just you know uh, speed it up. I have a couple of slides, maybe five or ten. Um, again, uh, what you want to do is just make sure that the container has the viewport width unit, and then everything that's inside of the container is is uh, uh, sized in m's because m's are multipliers of whatever the parent is. So whenever the parent is you know shrinking because it's specified in viewport widths, all other elements inside of it will just proportionally scale, right? This is some piece of CSS. Um, maybe the most important thing is if you want to retain the canvas for your for your artwork. So for instance, if you want to keep it four by three or two by one. You can use this cool trick, height zero, and then padding, 75%, which is basically 75% of the width, because this is how CSS works. Uh, and then you have this, uh, this canvas that, that, you, that just retains the aspect ratio, whether you, know, you resize it to a small screen or a big screen, it will always be like that. Uh, how it looks like when you put it into practice. Again, multiple ways to solve one single problem. We have sizing with M's, sizing with percentages, 
and with margins. It retains the proportion, right? So you don't have to recode it for every, for every single breakpoint. You just code it once, and it will work on every size. Of course, so many of these techniques are, you know, require a lot of manual labor, and I'm, again, super lazy. So we had this application type tester since 2005, and we added, like, Google Fonts and Adobe Typekits, et cetera, et cetera. So we said, like, let's, let's just add a couple of properties here. So basically what you can do in CSS, you can also um, you know, edit there. Uh, it's available for free, preview.typesearch.org. Preview uh, you can visit it and you know, you know, sign up and try to test it and you know, see how it works for you. Um, what I we often do, I just get lost in, in it. I just pick one random ampersand, and then I add some random words, like something like that. It's very cheesy, right? Uh, yeah, but my wife loves it. It's like, oh, oh my God, you're so romantic. <laughs> and then, and then I'm like, like wait, f wait for the next thing. Like, oh, you know. And she's like, ah. <laughs> All right. So, guys, thank you very much for listening and 